Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are taking a look at the Great Stars. The Great Stars is the edgier, older brother, and to be frank, the less successful brother uh, of the Morning Star. This weapon is found in a guarded carriage, it's in a chest in a guarded carriage, southwest of the Road of Iniquity, side path, side of grace. I'll have an image on screen showing the location. This weapon requires 22 strength and 12 dexterity to wield, and it weighs 10 units. It has Endure for its skill by default, and you'll probably want to change that because there are better options. At plus 25 on the heavy upgrade path, it has a physical base damage of 305, and an A scaling in strength, no dexterity scaling, and it will deal 55 bleed damage per hit. On top of that, it also does heal 1% of your total HP per hit as well. So that is one of the big reasons why this is a valuable weapon for PvE. In PvP, that 1% doesn't really amount to much. It doesn't really add up to a whole lot in most fights because they're over so quickly before it matters. But in PvP, um, it can occasionally make or break it. Now that said, Getting started with this weapon and why it's a valuable PvE weapon, it's really where this weapon shines because of that health regeneration and because of the bleed damage. In PvP, with the amount of bleed damage it deals in relation to its overall attack rating, you're going to kill a person before you can actually bleed them. Whereas in PvE against bosses, it actually has time to do its job. Now with that, if you do throw on something like Prelate's Charge and the Godskin Swaddling Cloth to increase the amount of health you restore on a hit, that will be an extremely viable option for bosses in this game, especially larger ones. Reason being, when you do use Prelate's Charge, the fire that you leave on the ground will continue to heal you as well. So if a boss is in that fire, or if a player is in that fire for that matter, you will continue to restore health. Now, if you want to really make that uh, a little bit more crazy, you can take advantage of the fact that it is a weapon that can bleed, so you can throw on the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Or if you want to take advantage of the multiple hits in Prelate's Charge, you can use the Thorny Cracked tier, you can use the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and you can use Mil Millicent's Prosthesis, stack them all together, and get some pretty big damage boosts out of that. And because it's already a great hammer and has good damage, and those are percentage-based boosts, needless to say, it does a pretty good job and will uh, stack that damage up extremely high. So, try this thing out on bosses if you have the stats to wield it. I would recommend that very highly. Now, in PvP, the benefits are not quite as useful, to be perfectly honest. Prelate's Charge is a good ash to have because it does have a good amount of hyper armor, and all of the aforementioned benefits of it do apply in PvP as well, but it is a fair bit harder to actually utilize in that regard because people have a lot less health than bosses in the game, and on top of that, they die a lot faster. So, it just kind of is what it is. Now, other pros of the weapon for PvP, it does have good hyper armor and you can trade hits well enough with it. As far as the moveset is concerned, the rolling and crouch attack is a decent 360 spin, so if you unlock while doing it and your opponent is trying to circle around you, you can keep facing them while you end your spin, reducing the chance that they circle around you trying to keep getting a backstab. For some reason, people also don't expect R1 spam from this thing, especially if you stagger your R1s slightly. They'll generally try to run in on you at some point during your R1 chain, and honestly, they just they get themselves hit by it for some strange reason. I have not quite figured out why people do it, but it happens. That said, as far as other useful skills on the weapon, I like Flaming Strike a lot on it because the weapon's moveset is not overly fast, and having a decently quick attack like Flaming Strike itself really does help out with this weapon, especially given you can follow it up and deal considerable damage because it is a great, uh, great hammer, and great hammers just have high attack rating, so keep that in mind. Another skill that I do like on this is, of course, Warcry. Warcry is great. You have all of the hyper armor ever, and you just charge forward and smash someone in the face with it. 
people still don't expect the follow-up attack on it, so that's really nice as well. And people generally try to run in on you after you do the first one and end up getting themselves hit. So, another thing to keep in mind. Really, this weapon relies a lot on people running into you and you trading hits with them, which is a little bit unfortunate. Because with this weapon, the damage is fine. And this is where we move into the cons of the weapon. The damage isn't spectacular, it's just fine. And with that, you don't really want to trade with anything that pokes. You don't even really want to trade with something that is uh, not even like a greatsword poke. You just would be hard pressed to out damage a uh, heavy thrusting sword. So really be careful with this thing if you're going to use it. You want to aim to trade hits, which is definitely true, but you need to be careful of what you trade hits with. So keep that in mind when you're using it and be careful. Maybe rely more on your skills for the trades as opposed to any R1 or R2 or jump attack because you could end up having, having a bad time. Other than that though, the weapon itself is a bit slow, which is a shame. It could be a bit faster. It would be nice if it could compete against the uh, heavier weapons that are quick, like, you know, the greatsword. It's a little hard to compete against the crouch poke with this weapon because it is such a quick attack and this weapon is slow in comparison. And with that crouch poke as well, another thing that makes it very dangerous and another reason why you don't want to trade against it is because those will work with the spear talisman, getting them bonus damage that really just increases that gap in the damage that you can deal versus the damage they can deal. It's just something that you gotta keep in mind. And aside from all of that, my other main gripe with this weapon is that the bleed on it is basically pointless. I mentioned it earlier on, but people will be dead before it ever procs. I don't think I've ever seen the bleed proc on this weapon once. So it's kind of unfortunate, but that's just the way that it is. Either way, this is the last fight in the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful in one way or another. If you have enjoyed it, then please do leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think about this weapon. Do you think I was a little bit harsh on it, or do you think I kind of just hit the nail on the head? Let me know in the comments. Either way, thank you again for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.